Hello dear friends, I'm Samuel Moore and welcome to my Study with Samuel Flamenco Guitar Series. So today, I'd like to talk about the flamenco palo, solea porbularia. Solea porbularia is a medium tempo palo. It has 12 beats and accents on 3, 6, 8, 10 and 12. In other words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In terms of its key, you can play solea porbularia in different keys, but most commonly it's played in the key of A Phrygian. In other words, if you're playing basic compass, the main chords you need to worry about are A major and B flat major. Now, there are a few little things I'd like to talk about with those chords. With the A major, you can sometimes put the third finger there on B flat, thus giving you a more Phrygian and flamenco y sound. Also, with the B flat, I generally like this voicing, but sometimes players prefer not to have the F in the voicing and have the open D instead. Generally speaking, both will work, but for the purpose of today, we're going to use the first idea. Now, as I've previously mentioned, the point of these videos is not to describe to you how the whole structure of solea porbularia works, or look at falsettas or escobia passages. We're really interested in focusing on the core accompaniment idea. The main idea that you keep coming back to again and again, whether you're playing solo or accompanying. So let's begin by establishing a core idea, and from there we'll build variations. So what I'll start by teaching you is this. So let's begin by just talking through what this core idea is before we get to any of the variations. I'd like to break this down in three beat chunks. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So let's begin with beats one, two, and three. On beats one, two, and three, we're really just moving between two chords. On one and two, we're in the A major chord and beats three, we move to the B flat chord. With your other hand, we're just going to do three down strikes with those two fingers. In other words, one, two, three. Put that together, and what we get is this. One, two, three. Now, the next section, four, five, six, we stay on that chord, so this hand doesn't need to do anything else. With this hand, however, we're going to tap on beat four, and then with the index finger, we're going to go up, down, up, down. In other words, four and five and six. Tap, up, down, up, down. So that's the basic idea, and when put with the chord, so put all of this together so far, and what we get is this. without me counting it. So, seven, eight, nine. This is an important set of beats in solea porbularia because it's the passage that allows us to get back to our A major, which we land on in beat 10. 
So what are we going to do here? Well, you've just landed on this chord on three, and then you've gone four, five, six. We're going to stay on this chord. However, I want you to lift out these two fingers, just leaving these two in place. And we're going to play a bass line with those two fingers in the left hand and with the thumb in the right hand. All the thumb strokes are rest strokes, by the way. The notes are going to be open D string, C, B flat. And what we're going to do, the reason why we've held those notes is we're going to do a little arpeggio on each one of these bass notes. For each bass note, you're going to line up your fingers there on the high strings, G, B, and E. And after you play the bass note, you're going to peel off from the lowest string to the highest string. And the rhythm is going to be a triplet. So it's basically going to go bass, one, two, three, bass, one, two, three, bass, one, two, three. Or if I play it, So let's put that 7, 8, 9 passage in with the rest of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And without me counting. So now we finally get to beat 10, 11, 12, where we cadence back onto the A. Now, very important here, we're going to put the Phrygian note in, the B flat, like I was explaining earlier, to give us this sound. Now, what we're going to do with that hand is fairly self-contained. This hand, it's a bit more involved. Rest stroke on the A string with the thumb, and then catch the high E string with the index finger. So that's 10 and. Then come down the basic chord string. So basically that is 10 and, 11 and, and all of those notes are rest strokes. On 12, you're just going to do a downward strike with the thumb on the B and the E note with a god bail. All together giving you 10 and, 11 and, So let's put that together with the rest of the compass. What we get is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're now going to loop that idea four times. But one thing I just want to draw your attention to before we do. Be very careful when you finish, because you're finishing with the A chord with the Phrygian note in. Ten, eleven, twelve. But then when you come back in with one, two, you don't want it there anymore. So take it out when you go one, two, three. In other words, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. Just be mindful of that, otherwise it'll catch you out in the loop. So let's now loop this four times. Here we go. So that's the basic idea that we're going to build all our variations off. So like we've done in other panels, let's now look at some variations. I'd like to begin by talking about beat 12. Beat 12 is a really important beat because you could either use it like we've just done as a definitive full stop to end one compass and then start another. In other words, 10, 11, 12, and then the new passage But let's say you want to use beat 12 as more of a springboard into the next compass. Something like this. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Now don't be spooked by that. 
it's not as difficult as it sounds. All we're doing is coming down the chord as normal. 10 and 11 and 12, but then on the end of 12, we're doing an upstroke. And then instead of just going one, two, three, we're tapping on beat one. And as we tap, we lift out that Phrygian note, and then we're going up on the end of one and down on two. So tap, up, down, thus giving you 10 and 11 and 12 and 1 and 2. And then you're ready to land on 3 as normal. Now this is a very simple embellishment. 10 and 11 and 12 and 1 and 2, 3. But it really gives you a nice way to end your compass and it also launches you into the next part of the phrase. So a really great embellishment you could do here is just loop the basic idea I've already taught you, but move between ending with the idea that we've just played and the more full stop based idea. In other words, like this. So already it sounds like we're improvising and being a lot more varied with our compass playing, even though we've only changed one little detail. One thing that's worth mentioning, when you're doing this, 10 and 11 and 12 and, a nice little embellishment you can add in is adding the pinky to the, to the frets here, thus giving you, instead of a Phrygian chord, you have a diminished chord. And that can be a really nice one to put in on 10 and 11 and, and it goes in here, 12 and, and then take it out, 1 and 2. So it's essentially exactly what you previously played, but with one additional note. 10, 11, 12 and 1 and 2, 3, and so on. So that's one way you can vary your compass. I'm just going to show you one more with Solia Porboleria. And that is going to focus on beats 7, 8, 9. So previously we've looked at how you can simply roll the notes and have a bass line. It's worth bearing in mind that much like in the Allegria video, you could change your arpeggio. So instead of doing a triplet, could have a semi-quaver. Now that's a nice variation but it's not the one I'm going to show you today. I'd like to show you what happens if you put more melodic ideas in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that basic idea of being on this chord, okay? So it's the B flat chord but without the F in there. So you basically just played one, two, You're then going to take that finger out, and all of this is played with the thumb in the right hand. So you don't have to worry about this hand at all, it's all thumb and it's all rest stroke. All you're going to do is come down the chord in semi-quavers. One, two, three, four. So that's seven and. Then lift this finger out and place it there on the F, and all you're going to do is play that with the thumb and then pull off onto the open E. So, so far it's... As soon as you've done the pull off, put this finger, the index, there on C. So behind where the pinky is on the D. You're then going to play the D and then pull off to the C. So, so far you've had this.
then catch this note, the B flat. So add that in and you've got And then finally to end, notice you've kept that index finger on the C this whole time. You're then going to use your second finger to play C sharp pulling off to C to give it more of an Arabic sound. And finally, play the B flat. So all together you've got this. And that gives you your perfect cadence. And by the way, when I said perfect cadence, I didn't mean a five to one, I meant perfect as in it sounds really good. Okay? So just by changing a small amount of detail, we can make solea por boleria sound really exciting. There are other variations we could look at, but they go outside what I would like to cover today. We're just going to keep it simple for now. So. Let's now start randomising the order of some of these ideas and putting it all together so that you have a really varied compass. As always, I'll end this video with a quick demonstration so you can see how this works. Here we go. Well, my dear friends, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. There'll be more videos coming soon. If you'd like to study with me on a more one-to-one -one basis, you can book Skype and Zoom lessons via my website. A link is in the description below. Until we next see each other, you stay safe, and as always, thank you for watching.